The revolution's begun The time to stand up has come We are the rocking of the throne We are the rocking of the throne Hi, my name is Victor Tiffany, the co-founder of Revolt Against Plutocracy, and I'm excited today to be speaking with one-time Green Party candidate for president and last year's campaign manager for the Green Party candidate for president of the Green Party, David Cobb. David, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be with you, Victor. Thanks for what you're doing at Revolt Against Plutocracy. Yeah, well, there's a lot of work uh still ahead of us but before we get to that i wanted to uh, i wanted to speak to you today about uh, criticism you've been getting from uh, a guy named frank and uh, the other guy's name was litvin uh, because you are uh, inviting rogue journalist caitlin johnstone to your uh, program on the green news network and interviewing her and so the criticism is twofold one toward her and one towards you. So I want to address both of those criticisms. And my final question will have to do with uh, uh, what she's attempting to do and actually what it would take to change the dynamic of, of the deep state. So let me first offer a, f a full disclosure. Four of my favorite writers are Glenn Greenwald, Paul Street, uh, Chris Hedges, and Caitlin Johnstone. So I have to admit right up front, I, I like, I don't agree always with everything they ever write, but largely I agree. And in, in the case of John Stone, I just really admire her style. The other three write like a boxer in the ring, throwing hooks and gloves, uh, hooks with gloves on and, and jabs and things like that. She writes like she's on the street and she's wearing brass knuckles, uh, even recently. She wrote a piece about John McCain's successful surgery saying, I fucking wish you'd die. And, I, I you know, she's, she writes things that progressives uh, think but often won't come out and say, particularly someone like you or I who's in a position of, of, of uh, you know, we have a reputation and, and, and we can't alienate people. But she doesn't mind it. She just comes right out there and, and swings. So let me address the question or the, the criticism Lativ and uh, Frank had for her, and then the next question will be their criticism towards you. Their criticism was she's advocating that the left and the right should work together, uh, specifically exposing, criticizing, and uh, deconstructing the deep state. And she, you know, she, so she names a particular person, this uh, Chern Chernovich, that she, that she specifically retweets and, and, and reposts his material and collaborates with online. Um, and, and, and that's the person she got a lot of heat for, for citing as, a, as someone to collaborate with for the purpose of uh, deconstructing the deep state. So my first question to you is, do you think it's fair of, by, those, of those two, by those two critics of her to be advocating this kind of, of left-right uh, uh, collaboration, something Ralph Nader has been uh, advocating. He wrote a whole book about left-wing, right-wing uh, collaboration uh, along specific issues. And as you know from our work uh, when I was on the Amendment Gazette with Paul Westlake, we advocated for uh, left-wing, right-wing collaboration to uh, for a uh, an amendment to the Constitution overturns Citizens United. So this is she's not doing anything innovative or new when she does this. So uh, address their their concerns about uh, to her calling for uh, collaboration with what they call fascist, sexist, and bigots. So Victor, I mean, there's a lot there. Uh, I want to start off by saying that uh, people can have disagreements. I don't have any problem with disagreements. Uh, uh, Litvin, uh, Frank, and anybody else can offer uh, critique uh, of me at any time. I recognize that I am a public figure. I do think it's interesting that Caitlin and I both uh, created a joint response and submitted it to Counterpunch. Uh, they have so far, a week later, refused to 
respond. And so far, Joshua Frank has written me back uh, on Facebook anyway and said, uh, David Cobb is important enough to criticize, but not important enough to publish. So I just want to say, I think that's a profoundly uh, uh, unfortunate turn of events uh, if we're not able to even have discourse and disagreement. Um, so I just want to note that. So watch for our response. Uh, we're going to give Counterpunch just another day. If we don't get it, then we're going to start publishing it in other places. Uh, but again, to repeat, Litvin, Frank have every right to criticize me. They have every right to criticize uh, Caitlin Johnstone. Uh, I personally think that the idea of talking to, to principled conservatives, liberals, moderates, uh, radicals, this is a good thing. We should actually engage in that kind of conversation because what we're trying to do is actually uh, build a movement uh, and there's going to be some disagreements. Now, I want to be very clear about this, Victor. I absolutely, positively, 100 uh, percent will not and do not want to collaborate with fascist brown shirts. I am not interested in, in that, quote, collaboration. They are my enemy. I understand that uh, to be clear. I'm going to go even deeper. Like you, I profoundly respect Caitlin Johnstone. Her writings are sharp. Uh, they're snarky. They're funny as hell. And the left uh, really needs more humor in its analysis and its discourse. Caitlin Johnstone brings it and brings it hard and, and oftentimes with a belly laugh. I also have to tell you, uh, I had never heard of Cernovich uh, until uh, this sort of blowback and dust up. So I took a little time uh, to research it. I disagree. I don't want to work with Cernovich. Uh, I do find him to be very problematic. Uh, but I'm also not going to then turn Caitlin Johnstone from a, an ally into an enemy because I have a disagreement with her about one particular person. And I guess that's really the, the point that I want to make here, Victor, to your question, and, and especially if you're going to edit it. Here, I think, is, is the key. I don't agree with anybody 100% of the time. Hell, Victor, I don't agree with myself 100% of the time, right? Uh, and frankly, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and if I'm ever wrong, I'm not doing it on purpose, right? So I don't get defensive. I also don't insist on the kind of purity uh, that... Joshua Litvin and others, uh, or Joshua Frank and, and uh, Yo Litvin seem to be advocating. Uh, that road is a road towards sectarianism. It is the purity of the left, which quite frankly, Victor, is the reason that most working class people, uh, you know, and as you know, I come out of poverty, not just working class, but I come out of poverty. Uh, you know, my family members uh, just basically ignore that kind of leftist nonsense. It is... So much uh, sound and fury signifying nothing. So I don't uh, advocate in any way personally a engaging with uh, Cernovich. Uh, the fact that Caitlin does is where we have a disagreement. But Caitlin and I agree 99% of the time. And since we are agreeing 99% of the time, I'm not going to let that one disagreement prevent me from having her as a monthly guest on Democracy in Action on the Green News Network. Uh, and uh, she will continue to be a guest. You, you basically just answered my other second question. I was about their criticism of, of you having her on. You basically just answered all, all that, basically. So let me jump to my third question, unless you have something more to add. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I, and again, I think uh, the, the important thing to remember is if we're going to actually engage in real organizing, it gets messy. Uh, and as you know, Victor, you've seen me in action in public settings. You've seen me uh, in pool hall. Well, at least you've seen me a number of times in both coffee shops and bars. And you've seen how I talk to people. I'm always me, but I use a little bit different language depending on who the audience is, right? Uh, you know, so I am an organizer in the real world where things can get messy and we have to listen to one another and look for the opportunities to build together. And that's something uh, that I am proud that I do, and I'll continue to do that. So let me ask about uh, taking her uh, desire to work with the left or the, the alt-right, uh, whatever people are that. I thought, I, I thought uh, uh, Frank and, and Litoff were, were unfair because of the uh, – referencing the 
uh, resistance chicks, their, their name, not something I gave them, uh, as, as racist, which, you know, I've interviewed them. And I think they're a couple of fine ladies. I, I've never seen anything they've written or said to, to be racist. But let me just go back to uh, what Caitlin's attempting here in terms of the deep state. Because there is something out there, this, uh, this uh, bureaucracy that tends to be more on top than on tap, right? They're, they're, they're a little more controlling than uh, many of us. So you go, whether it's Republican or Democrat or, or someone uh, off in the normal scale like Trump, and we're ending up all with the same foreign policy all over again because it seems like they're they're advising him and directing foreign policy in a way that's uh, on top rather than on tap. So my question to you has to do with how to change that their position in, in our government from being on top to on tap. That's a situation, and basically I want you to disagree or agree with me about that, where the left and the right can't work together because ultimately to change that position to, to shift the deep state from on top to on tap requires people to win elections and, and, and take control of the executive branch of government and then to have your secretaries and department heads to go out and tell the CIA and the FBI and the rest, NSA and all the rest of these organizations, look, we're in control now. We're making policy. We want your advice. We want your intelligence. We want your input. But in the at the end of the day, it's going to be uh, the new uh, party that's in control, whether it's the Green or the People's Party or the People Independent or Progressive Independent Party, whatever progressive alternative to the uh, Republican Democratic duopoly that's in place today. Finally, eventually, some days takes the executive branch in in, uh, in a national election, just imagining that happening, because I think that is what needs to happen in order to uh, put, shift the deep state to the ONTAP position. And for that to happen, there's there can't be collaboration with conservatives, principled or otherwise, because face it, they're just not going to be part of a progressive party. Is that is that about right? Look, I think that's right, Victor. And this is why this is not a one dimensional conversation. It simply can't be uh, because it's incredibly complex and interrelated. Uh, I agree with you that we are going to actually have to like, literally take control of the state. Uh, and the only way to do that nonviolently is through elections. Right. So I, like you, am a revolutionary. I believe we have to restructure this society. Uh, and I believe that we have to take and exercise state power in order to do that. Uh, and uh, I am very clear that in order to do that, we need to build a uh, an electoral arm of the movements for peace, justice, democracy, and social and racial justice uh, around a shared program and platform. As you know, I believe the Green Party can uh, be that political party. In other words, we have to have a social movement uh, that is broad, deep, conscious, educated, willing to disrupt the system. Uh, in that, in the social movement and in, in civil society, we can find those agreements. But when it comes to an electoral arm, literally, you're going to actually have to describe a, a, a coherent program or platform. And I don't think that you can actually build unity across the left and the right because there are ideological differences. And so at the electoral level, uh, where you control the state, uh, you're either going to have a progressive vision or, or a conservative vision uh, in control of the state. I certainly agree that there is something called the deep state. I think the deep state is, in fact, uh, controlling many aspects of especially foreign policy and uh, the FBI and the CIA and the entire apparatus of spying that happens both domestically to those of us in this country uh, and um, internationally. So uh, I guess I, what I'm going to get at is, and to say it again, I hope clearly and coherently, any uh, work together uh, with, with principled conservatives and principled liberals or progressives can happen in civil society. But when it comes to elections, there's not an opportunity to do that because you are, in fact, in contention for the to the, for the vote and people in the current system get one vote. And I'm trying to convince them to vote for the Green Party with our four pillars of a commitment to peace, 
racial and social justice, grassroots democracy, uh, and ecology. So I don't actually see how it's possible to make that uh, uh, sort of left-right dynamic in the electoral context. It doesn't make sense. Four, is that all? I'm going to see you in two weeks at the Democracy Convention in uh, Minneapolis. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to be describing in my workshop uh, 11 uh, principles by which we're going to attempt to uh, form a, uh, a congressional level strategy similar to what we did uh, in 19, uh, 2016. Boy, it was uh, only last year. 2016 to... Uh, put leverage on the Democratic Party, as we stated in our uh, billboard uh, in uh, Philadelphia during the DNC, nominate Sanders or lose in November. Well, they didn't nominate I Sanders. I, I got to, because I know it's difficult, because you said that so casually, and I want to lift up the fact that I saw a revolt against plutocracy uh, that basically created the Bernie or bust movement. You were prescient, Victor. Uh, you and Revolt Against Plutocracy were the first group that I heard making that case. Uh, you, made it, you made it loudly, consistently, and frankly, you were prescient. There is no doubt that you were right. Uh, the corporatist militarists who control the Democratic Party and still do uh, were absolutely wrong. Uh, and I don't want you to just sort of casually, as sort of a prefatory comment, talk about the work that Revolt Against Plutocracy and Progressive or Bus did leading up to the DNC. I saw you on the streets of Philly. Uh, you were you were like a, a mini celebrity there, right? Uh, and I think that you earned that because of uh, the organizing and mobilizing you did with uh, Progressive or Bust that became Bernie or Bust. Uh, so, you know, kudos to you. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I hung around with Tim Black. Now, there's a celebrity. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, we're going to come back. We're going to try this again uh, with uh, something like 470 movements. That's 435 congressional districts and 33 states, whatever that adds up to. We're attempting to build a whole series of movements around the country based upon a specific agenda that's populist, that's progressive. And we're drawing a line in the sand again. It's going to be... Uh, these kind of contract signing Democrats, or screw you, you're going to lose in November. That's that's the final uh, objective. And, and that's, as people say to me, well, how'd that work out last time? Actually, it worked out okay because we stopped. And this is one reason I really liked uh, Caitlin Johnstone, because she agrees with us on this specific point. We stopped the most dangerous of the two dangerous candidates from getting elected to the White House, or at least we assisted with that with that stoppage. But uh, there's more to it than that. Again, it's more complicated because the vote counts in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and, and Michigan, but we were largely responsible for stopping Hillary Clinton, the extremely dangerous neoconservative, neoliberal uh, I mean, that, a, that, that, that the people rejected. Here, here's how I see it, Victor. Melicia Figueroa and I are doing movement schools for revolutionaries across the country. Uh, and I'd love to come up to upstate New York and do one uh, where I know you live. Uh, it, our analysis is that we are living in a moment where neoliberalism is literally morphing into neo-fascism, uh, that we are at a, uh, a crisis moment uh, that is very similar to the crisis moment of the 1920s uh, in, across Europe, uh, which of course led to fascism. Uh, and that that was happening at the time, basically, when society and economics was being restructured from an agra uh, agrarian, agriculturally based society to an industrial one. Watching what we think of as industrialism basically morph into laborless production with automation, robotics, and technology, uh, and so forth. Uh, and so that's why we are in this sort of moment. And it's either going to, uh, like the, the, what they try to call, instead of two poles, there are really three poles. Uh, the, the extreme center is the neoliberalism uh, of, that Cl Hillary Clinton uh, represents. The, the right is the emerging neo-fascism uh, that is happening. Uh, and the left pole, however, is the sort of Bernie Sanders, Green Party, uh, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, 
uh, Syriza Podemos uh, in other parts of the world. And I think that the extreme center cannot hold anymore. I honestly believe, Victor, we're either going to go you know, left or right. Uh, and as you know, I am committed to going uh, to the left. And I'm trying to bring as many people along with me as I possibly can. And so when it comes to the ballot box, I will not vote uh, for a neoliberal corporatist militarist. I will not vote for a neo-fascist under any shape, uh, at period. Uh, you know, the debate right. of who was worse doesn't matter to me. They're both going to take us over a cliff. We've got right. to build an electoral arm for peace, justice, democracy, and ecology. And I, that's what the Green Party represents. Well, I look forward to uh, sharing more of these ideas with you, and I really try and will be working to bring people who have had electoral success at the congressional district level to the workshop I'll be leading, because the whole second half of the workshop will be brainstorming. Tell me what worked in your congressional race or in races that you've been involved with. And I'm going to make a list of these and we're going to get this whole session recorded in order to put together. We're building a turnkey movement, revolutionary movement that is designed to get first, get progressives elected and second, stop the neoliberals from uh, getting elected. And, and to that end, use the Green Party candidates as spoilers. Until they start winning elections, they can serve the purpose that we want them to serve, which is spoilers to defeat neoliberal Democrats. I'm down with it. I uh, want to use this opportunity also to invite uh, viewers to join Victor Tiffany at Revolt Against Plutocracy and me, David Cobb, at the Democracy Convention, August 2 through 6 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, www.democracyconvention.org. Uh, we've got about 500 people coming. Uh, it should be a place where these kinds of uh, ideas are debated, discussed, uh, different tactics are explored and so forth. And I'm going to conclude again by saying this, Victor, uh, I do not believe that tactical disagreements uh, should ever make erstwhile allies enemies. We can agree to disagree uh, as long as we are basically moving in the same direction. I've had a lot of disagreements with you. Uh, I hope you felt like I've been respectful to you, even as I've disagreed with you. Uh, that's what principled political struggle looks like. Uh, I will do the same with Joshua Frank, Yov Litvin, and uh, Caitlin Johnstone, and would encourage others to do the same. Very good. Thanks for your time, David. Appreciate it. Bye now. Rap didn't become political revolutionaries because of Bernie Sanders. Rap originated the Bernie or Bust Pledge because we're political revolutionaries. We are building a leverage movement to demand the next president of the United States is a genuine progressive. Please go to our website and sign up to join us today.